Hi everyone, it's Michael. So one of the requests I receive most often is, Michael, can you please do a comprehensive how do I convert my orchid to semi-hydroponics video? So the reason I haven't already done that is because I felt as though my repot videos were sufficient. Um, you know, my repotting my Psychopsis video or repotting my Maxillaria tenifolia video because the process across all different types of orchids is pretty much the same. You go through the same treatment processes to execute that um, transition. Um, but I think what people are looking for specifically is a step-by-step -step breakdown of what exactly I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So that's precisely what I hope to accomplish with making this video today. Um, so the best case study I could possibly think of to do this video is with a good old-fashioned beginner orchid, the Phalaenopsis. It is everywhere. So today when I came into work, this bad boy was sitting on my desk. And um, I later saw my good friend Kristen, who I affectionately call Kiki. Hey, Kiki. Um, and she came to me and she said, Michael, what did I do wrong? And I really want, especially if you're a beginner orchid grower, get that feeling of guilt, get that feeling of I didn't do a good job out of your head because it's just not going to serve you. Of course, there are things you could have done better or differently. But realistically, this plant was probably doing very poorly the day you bought it, Kristen. And let me explain that. From a business perspective, whether you are a greenhouse or Home Depot or a grocery store, the objective is to raise a mature orchid plant that is flowering as soon as possible. So let's think about the facts that we know. Every time you change the medium on an orchid, it sets the plant back. Um, every time you change the medium on an orchid, it's more expensive and more costly and requires more labor. So we know that Everyone who's trying to raise and sell orchids is going to try to do it in, for the most part, there are of course some exceptions, some specialty orchid houses don't do this, but for the most part, they're going to just try to expedite the process as much as possible and not think too critically about the overall health of the plant. And sidebar here, but if they did spend a lot of time thinking about the health of the plant and taking every proper step, this plant wouldn't cost, what does it usually cost, like 15 to $20, it would probably cost a lot more. So it's a blessing and it's a curse. But the way that this typically goes is they have a seedling, a little baby orchid plant, they put it into a plug of something water retentive like sphagnum moss, and when the plant grows up, rather than removing the medium, they just fill around the pot with bark or more sphagnum moss, and they continue to do that process until we arrive right here. Now, the problem with organic medium is that after a period of about two years, it starts to decompose and compact. Because these plants are epiphytic and they grow with open air, the roots need to breathe. But as the organic medium disintegrates and compacts, it starts to suffocate the roots. Once the roots are suffocated, they start to rot. And once they rot, the plant can't properly hydrate. And that's how we have arrived where we are. So I just wanted to give you a snapshot of how your plant has arrived at this process because it really isn't entirely your fault. But you can do things to bring it back and that's precisely what I'm going to do on Kristen's behalf today. So that being said, let's go down and I will walk you through each step in this process. So the first step in this process is to soak the existing root system and potting medium. And this serves two essential functions. One, it's going to moisten and loosen all of the existing potting medium, which will make it a lot easier to remove in a moment. But beyond that, it's going to hydrate any of the viable roots. So typically when the roots are um, dry, they're a little bit more white. And then when they're uh, hydrated, they turn a little bit more green. So it'll help us identify what the healthy roots are and what the dead roots are as we go through the process of removing decomposing medium. So let's go ahead and get it soaking. I typically do for a period of about 15 minutes. Okay, Google, set a timer for 15 minutes. Okay, 15 minutes, starting now. 15 minutes is up, so let's go ahead and remove this old potting medium. First, of course, I am going to dump all of the water that we were using to soak. Oh, it's heavy now. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and give the container a nice gentle squeeze that'll help to loosen up all of the um, roots from this guy in case it's just really, really insistent that it wants to hang out. Oh, uh, come on, you can do it. This one's fighting me a little. Man, well, that was messy. So let's begin the process of removing the medium. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. Guys, can you see this? Remember how earlier I was describing how it's a little sphagnum moss plug and then they fill medium around it? This is just the most clear example of what I was talking about. Here's the sphagnum moss, dead center. You can see it. You can even see the shape of the container. 
which is crazy. And then they've just filled bark medium all the way around it. So Kristen, don't feel bad, girl. You are not set up for success. Okay, guys. So I removed as much of the potting medium as I could. Now I'm gonna go ahead and give the plant a little rinse and I'm also gonna remove these flower spikes because they're getting in the way. So uh, something to know, always use tepid water when you are interacting with orchids. These are tropical plants and cold water is going to shock them and burning water is going to burn them. So um, I'm gonna take this over to the sink and honor that rule while I wash this. Okay guys, there it is, all tidied up. So now I'm gonna go ahead and press pause while I tidy up my workspace, and then we will come back and we will start to remove all of the dead or decaying matter on the root system. Now, if you have any questions about the tools I'm using to accomplish this process, please see the links in the description below. I link everything, um, all of my post care instructions, all of my watering and fertilizing protocols, um, humidity, all that good stuff, it's all down below. But let's just go ahead and begin this process. Now, a quick sidebar. The way that you can tell if an orchid root is dead is by feeling in addition to the aesthetics. So when you squeeze a root, it should feel plump, it should feel juicy, and it should feel somewhat rigid. But with these ones, you can see it's hollow, it's mushy, and if I were to pull it, it actually, let's see, it'll actually begin to separate. And you can see the villamen, which is this coating on the outside of the root, peels right off. And that's a telltale sign that your root is dead. So now I'm just going to go ahead, I'll probably time lapse it so you don't have to watch the entire process, but just begin trimming and removing all of the decaying material. All right guys, I've just completed the process of removing all of the dead and decaying root system from this orchid, and you can see that there's not a whole lot left, but it is truly for the best. Anytime you leave decomposing organic matter around a root system, it starts to release gases that can potentially poison the plant. So it is best practice to just go ahead and get rid of them. That being said, you have to be aware that these roots are also going to rot once they go into a semi-hydroponic setup. And the reason for that is simple. Roots are acclimated to the environment in which they are born, meaning these roots were born into sphagnum moss and they are therefore equipped to extract moisture from sphagnum moss. They can't change their, uh, their physiology once they're fully formed. So as these roots rot, the orchid will know what's going on and it's going to start to generate a new root system starting right around here. These roots will creep their way down into the leca beads and those roots will be perfectly equipped to this growing system. And that's just how this works. You will experience setbacks. You'll start to see that some of the bottom leaves made yellow and fall off but that is totally normal. Don't panic and please do not repot it again back into bark because asking your plant to convert into another type of media again is just going to stress it out and almost certainly kill it. We've reached the portion that without fail always makes me feel so sad and that is the removal of the flower spikes. They are so magnificent and that's the whole reason we do this. We wanna see these beautiful blooms but this is such an imperative part of the process. Now, let me explain why. Orchids can be semi-suicidal, which sounds crazy, but it's true. The whole objective of the orchid is to reproduce sexually. So it invests all of its energy into creating these beautiful blooms so that it can be pollinated and its genetic information can be passed along. That being said, if the orchid has the choice between putting out blooms while its root system dies or putting out a root system so it can continue putting out blooms, it's always going to choose to put out its blooms. So if you do not remove these flower spikes, the orchid will essentially commit suicide in the hopes of it being pollinated. That's just not what you want. So by virtue of cutting back the flower spike all the way, you effectively force the plant into active growth mode. It's going to invest all of its energy in its root growth and development so that the plant can be healthy, send out another flower spike, and continue to flower for many years to come. So that's why we do this. Now there is a method to the process of removing. You wanna make sure that you clip just above the bottom node. So this little, uh, I don't know what you would call that, this little band or this little nodule, that's the node. And the reason we snip above it is it creates a really nice natural barrier. So if for any reason right above it gets infected or the open wound you create on the plant gets infected, it'll stop at the node. If you clip below, you run the risk of this becoming infected, which will transfer to the body of the plant and then the entire plant will die. So that's why you do it this way. So let's go ahead and get it done. Oh, makes me so sad. 
I've got my sterilized cutting tools. And here we go. Ugh, sorry guy. And there they go. So now this big fella can invest all of its energy in its root growth and development. And we've arrived at the treatment portion of our repot process. So we're gonna do two types of treatments. The first being for insects and pests, and the second being for bacteria and viruses. So in the bottle on the right, I have hydrogen peroxide at 3%. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give the root system a quick spritz. And any snails or any other insects that might like to munch on your roots are going to be immediately eradicated in the process. So now while that settles, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my second bottle, which has a solution of rubbing alcohol and dish soap. And I'm gonna spray that all over the leaves of the plants. So anything like aphids, mealybugs, anything that wanted to come in for a free ride and for a free meal on your orchid will be killed. All right, now that everything has been treated in the appropriate solutions, I'm gonna let this sit for 15 minutes. Okay, Google, set a timer for 15 minutes. Sure, 15 minutes, starting now. 15 minutes has passed, so I'm gonna give the orchid a quick rinse to wash off all of the treatment solutions, and then we're gonna come back and treat for viruses and bacteria. So now that that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and take my Thysan 20 solution. Again, if you have any questions about what this is that I'm using and why I'm using it, go ahead and reference my toolkit video below. But I'm just gonna go ahead and pour this into the container to sterilize the root system. And while that soaks, I'm also going to go ahead and take the same solution, which I have in this spray bottle here, and treat the leaves, just in case there are any hidden viruses. Once again, I'm gonna leave this for about 15 minutes. Okay, Google, set a timer for 15 minutes. Okay, 15 minutes, starting now. We've finally reached the moment where we actually repot the orchid. So I've gone ahead and drained all of the Fizan 20 solution. And now we're gonna go ahead and take our pre-drilled semi-hydroponic container. Again, if you have any questions about how I do this, go ahead and defer to the links below. Um, but we're gonna take a layer of Leica beads and arrange it all the way to where the drainage holes are. Now the reasoning behind that is you don't wanna take the roots and just let them sit in water. So by virtue of placing the Leica beads here, it's going to make the roots stop just above. Now when the new root system grows in and it grows down straight into the water reservoir, you don't have to worry about that because those roots are adapted for that specific environment. These ones, however, are not, and we wanna slow the process of them decomposing as much as possible. So go ahead and grab that layer and fill. So there we are. And now what we can do is go ahead and place the orchid in such a way where it is arranged to hover just above the water reservoir, like so. Get this out of the way. All right, so now that the orchid is repotted and fully situated, we're gonna go ahead and give it a little bit of fertilizer and kelp max solution. I'm gonna go ahead and take this nutrient solution and I'm gonna flush it through this semi-hydroponic container. Now what this is, is distilled water, orchid fertilizer, and kelp max, which is a powerful plant growth stimulant which will help initiate new root growth. I almost forgot one super important step, which was to use cinnamon. So cinnamon is a great natural antiseptic and it's gonna go ahead and help to close the wounds I created when I snipped off the flower spikes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take a little Q-tip. I'm gonna dip it into the cinnamon and I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little dollop right on top of the open wound. And what that's gonna do is it's going to sterilize the cut and it's also going to help it dry really nice and neat. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a clean Q-tip and do that a second time on the other flower spike and then we're in the home stretch. At long last, we've arrived at the final step in the process, which is placing your new semi-hydroponic growing orchid onto a germination mat or a heat mat. Now, the objective of this is to help facilitate the transition. The warmth is going to ease the difficulty of adapting to this new system. It's going to encourage new root growth faster, and it's going to overall make your transition a little bit more smooth. Fowls specifically are warm growing orchids, but this is going to be helpful to almost all orchids that you transition to semi-hydroponics. So the real question now is what comes next? Well, here's what I've observed to be true. Your existing root system will rot out entirely. 
Then your bottom leaves will start to yellow and drop. This process has already started here, but that's from dehydration, not from the transition to semi-hydroponics. Then you'll start to see new root growth emerging from the base of the plant. Then you'll start to see small new leaves growing from the top here. Those leaves will be smaller than the old leaves, but that's really common because the plant has been set back. But when the leaves return to their original size, that's when you know that your plant has fully adapted to semi-hydroponics. So that's pretty much it, guys. Kristen, I'm gonna go ahead and hold on to this plant until a new leaf comes out and you've got a nice new root system that is well established. Um, and then I know that you're gonna do fantastically caring for this orchid. Thank you, as always, for spending your time with me. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, please leave them in the section below. And be sure to like, subscribe, or share if you find this useful. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Have a good one.